All right, guys, what's up? Now, I got my man Glenn Morgan here, one of my favorite people to talk to. So smart and talented when it comes to football. And we had something big happen in the NFC North that's going to kind of affect, I mean, at least the next five years of this division. And Jared Goff signed a huge contract with the Detroit Lions. Four years, $212 million, but it's also was an extension to his contract this year. And then you add on he's getting 70 plus million as a signing bonus this year. And he's the quarterback of the Detroit Lions mm -hmm. from 2024 until 2028. He will not be a free agent until 2029. That's five years and they're giving him over $200 million. If you count in his salary this year, it's somewhere around $240 million for those five years. Now, it's an interesting note because Bears just drafted Caleb Williams, rookie deal, number one pick overall. Over the next four years, his contract is going to cost us $39.4 million. <laughs> so $240 million, yes. less than $40 million. And both quarterbacks are going to be under contract until 2029. Now, that's assuming Caleb Williams' fifth-year option is picked up. I, I'm We're five years out, but I'm pretty confident that's going to happen already <laughs> if he's not re-signed. I'm, I'm just going to go on the book and say that five years ahead of time, guys. I'm knocking on wood. But this is important because this is, this is something that's going to be big in the NFC North going forward. The Lions are a team – that have kind of rose up. They've came back from being a team that was in the gutter for a long time. But now they're a team that is now paying Jared Goff. And we got to remember who Jared Goff is. He's not he's not Patrick Mahomes. He's not Josh Allen. I'm not going to sit here and say he's awful. And I'm, I'm actually, I like Jared Goff. I think he's a average quarterback in the NFL with the potential to be above average in the right circumstance. But what are the Lions going to look like for five years paying Jared Goff 50 plus million dollars a season? Because that is going to limit what they, the team they can put around Jared Goff. And we're not even going to get into Amon Ross St. Brown's contract, who just got my, I, I love him. He's one of the best slot receivers in the NFL, but that was a lot of money. So this is what the Lions have going forward. And I just think it's a really interesting dynamic between especially the Bears and Lions here where we're going to have an opportunity to Caleb Williams versus Jared Goff. If you take them out and just look at them from an outside perspective, we're going to have an extra $200 million to surround around Caleb Williams than the Lions will with Jared Goff over the next five years. How do you think this plays out? I just want to hear your thoughts. I know that was a long-winded opening and i'm kind of covering a lot of bases no, no, that's fine. give me your thoughts on this glenn Sorry. first off i'll say that you know it's not just uh jared golf which you know i'm not saying ron but it's also panay sewell those three guys combined you're talking they've invested about 444 million dollars in those three guys over that span over the next several years yeah that's a lot of money so it's not just the jared golf part in terms of the investment the question is how the Lions going to continue to feel their team to be competitive, to be able to compete at the level that they've been doing the last, uh, definitely last season, and even a little bit towards the end of the season before last. Uh, going forward, uh, I believe to answer that question, I believe they believe in Brad Holmes. I believe Brad Holmes believes in himself in terms of he's going to be able to draft talent. I think they believe in their ability to draft players and to and to uh, develop players, and they've done a great job of it. They've done a really great job. I mean, since keep in mind when, when golf got there, everybody's looking at because it's like <laughs> it was like the Rams got Stafford and the Lions had to take golf and his contract. <laughs> OK, and then you look at his contract and you're like, OK, and by the end of 2024, I think they can get out of his contract if they want to get out of his contract. And, you know, they can be looking for a quarterback then. Blah blah blah. They drafted Hinton Hooker last year. They can develop him quick enough. Maybe he'll be in time and he'll be in line for this offense. And everything can, uh, can coalesce with him. Hinton's not going to see the, the light of day anytime soon because golf is knock on wood. Golf has been one of those durable quarterbacks over his span uh, of time, being a starter in the league. So, and if the offensive line, he does a good job of not getting hit a lot. 
And I think he's he sacked less than 40 times last year. I think it, like between 30 to 35 or maybe 38 at the most times last year. So, you know, he doesn't get sacked a lot. Uh, he's done a better job of handling the blitz than he did uh, previous years. He still struggles when he's off structure and that kind of stuff. But I think the Lions, to answer your question, I think the Lions feel confident. Clearly, they feel confident because they've invested the money in them because there's so many things that he does do. And I think there are those things that quarterbacks do or that the players do that we don't, not just in the locker room, but how practices are comported, how these guys interact, how they handle things on the sidelines, the conversations we can't hear, how they deal with the adversity. And keep in mind, three wins, three, 13 and one his first season with the Lions. If, if anything said he wasn't going to be there, that record said that. And then they were struggling the second year. They turned it on late, but beforehand they were way under 500. And then they fought through to go, I believe, finish nine and eight and just missed the playoffs. So, and then this year, obviously, they kept building forward. So, uh, golf has shown that he can deal with adversity. You know, he's, he dealt with the adversity of being traded, being dumped, summarily dumped, and then seeing the team that dumped him go ahead and win the Super Bowl. That had to hurt. <laughs> okay. So am I am I crap? I'm crap like they said I'm crap because a guy gets there in one year and he did in one year what I couldn't do in several. So that's got to play in your head a little bit. He overcomes that. You're in Detroit. And not only that, but keep in mind, Jared Goff, he really I read some of what he was saying. It wasn't the numbers. Athletes always say that. I sort of kind of tend to believe him because he's been paid. He was like, I want the no trade clause. That's something he really wanted. So he wants to be in Detroit. When's the last time you heard anybody? Tigers, Pistons. Red Wings oh, or Lions say, no, Detroit. I want to be here, renegotiate. Right. Oh, yeah. It's like, hey, you know, I can't wait till my contract's over, you know. So so he wants to be there. And here's a here's a city that's rocked with them because and rocking with them because they've been through, you know, football purgatory, if not hell, over the last 30 plus years. So I think what it says is that the Lions know exactly who they are. I believe no matter what we think about what they're doing, they believe they know what they're doing. And so far, they keep disproving it. We thought they were crazy when they hired the head coach that they hired. Bite off the kneecaps. Oh, that's not going to last. <laughs> okay, well, we were wrong there. What are they doing? Taking Laporta and Jamar Gibbs. They, they overdrafted and they took the linebacker. I think they got him in the fourth. Oh, wow. Okay. Rookie getting rookies of the year. Oh, okay. I guess these guys are all, an all rookie team. They made the playoff. Oh, conference. What are they doing getting Jared Goff? They Gonna, oh, they kept. Oh, oh okay. It, now they look like they're the odds-on favorite, you know, to win the division again, and they're at least a top three consideration in terms of winning the NFC uh, conference. So, I believe they know who they are. They know what they're doing, and they they're going to, you know, again contracts. They don't they don't last as long as they say they they last. The guaranteed money for the players is what you really want. So there's always going to be an out in a contract somewhere with the player if they're not doing what they need them to do. And then they can always trade that player if they need to. But I believe they that they have faith in how they draft and how they develop players. And so I think they're confident enough. And they we, there's, proof, there's proof there. You know, they've been proving it. They've been proving it to us for the last several years. We just not been believing it because we keep thinking it's the same old Lions. And it's not. So what does that mean for the rest of the NFC? What does it mean for the rest of the NFC or Central? Jeez, I'm showing my age. NFC North, uh, I think it means... You know what you, you know that the Lions are in it, in it to win it. You know I, that they 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 have anchored in, they've hunkered down, uh, they're digging in, they're not going anywhere. I think the the, the Packers they still have some things to prove. Love had a nice year, but they still need, he needs to show it time and time. He needs to show it for more than just one year. So there's still some things to prove there. Um, and Minnesota obviously is in a kind of a bit of a rebuilding restructuring kind of phase themselves and JJ whether he starts this year or not clearly they got him to be their quarterback of the future maybe not the quarterback of now but the quarterback of the future and they got him so they can pay Justin Jefferson if they kept uh, Cousins they weren't gonna be able to keep both those guys for what they were asking as the Bears I, I think honestly I think we 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 need to not worry about what the Lions are doing <laughs> make sure that we're developing our players it, and I think we, we really need to make sure we have uh a plan for if when Shane Waldron leaves, because if we're doing well, that means he's not going to stay much, much past maybe two years, to be quite honest. And the Lions have something they have to consider as well, because their offensive coordinator is probably going to leave after this year if they have success again. He, he's probably looking for oh, better no. head coaching. But golf is a veteran. Golf has been there. 
Right. But here's the thing. Here's not, here's what paying golf means too. You're going to have continuity with your offense because at this point in his career, he's a veteran. He's 29 years old now. He's been to two different uh, conference championship team games with two different teams, and he's had some really good coaching. So he, he's a guy who I'm not saying he's going to be the de facto offensive coordinator, but he knows what he can do. He knows how to talk with an offensive coordinator. They'll be able to work together, and there's enough respect in that organization. This is what that contract says, too. The contract says whoever the next offensive coordinator is, you're not going to shit on Jared Goff because his money is going to be more than what you're getting paid. And he's had success before you got here, so you need to you need to prove it. So so this, he's going to be whoever the next offensive coordinator is. He's going to take that job, knowing that you know he's dealing with a veteran, Blasey Skippy. You know that and Jared. That's also says that Jared Goff is going to be in on who the next offensive coordinator is. He doesn't have the final decision. No, obviously the GM has that final decision, but he's going to be a part of this conversation. That's what that money says. That money says this guy is going to be part of the conversation when it comes to who the coaches and who maybe some of the receivers or some of the offensive players are going to be. Because when you're paying that kind of money, we need you to be successful. What do you need to be successful? And golf's not a jerk. You know, he's a very, he, he's probably one of the good guys in the NFL in terms of ego. He's never come across as an e egomaniacal person. Uh, he's not a narcissistic individual. And again, he wants to stay in Detroit. <laughs> so he's not a narcissistic person. So you have a guy here who's going to work well with, he's, he's going to do his best to work with who's brought in but it's going to be working together. It's not just going to be one way and then the highway. It's not going to be like he was with the Rams. With the Rams, it was head coach's way or the highway. And it was the highway for him. That's not going to be a situation this time around. His contract mandates that he that it mandates respect and his what he's done. Hell, if you look at golf's numbers, just since he's been a lion, he'd be the Bears' third all-time leading passer with twelve thousand, he's got twelve thousand two hundred plus yards with the Lions in three years. He would be the Bears' third all hundred freaking years. He'd be the third all-time leading passer in Chicago Bear history, just with his Lions career alone, and also touchdowns. I think he's got seventy-eight touchdowns as a Lion. That would be third in Chicago as well. So, yeah, I, I think it says we really need to do better, <laughs> and 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 it also tells me that if you're creative enough and you know. You're not just your front office, but you have a plan. You have your financials in order. You have contingencies for your financials. You can feel comfortable doing this kind of a, a contract because you know how to make it work with your roster. You know, we've yet to get to that point yet. We haven't we haven't had those proven. We haven't had that one proven player because the quarterback takes a big chunk. Now we've got it in the edge rusher to some line, degree, man. and we may eventually have. Right. We may eventually have it with one of our wide receivers where they're getting some money, but we haven't had a situation where we're paying one person a lot of money and have to figure out how to get talent. You know, we thought that was the situation with Justin that, hey, you can keep Justin, figure the money out, because if you trade down, you can get a whole ton of players that you don't have to pay for this year and a whole ton of draft picks next year. You don't have to pay them. So you'll have a good three to five years. So you have to worry about paying you know, any the number of talented players you got and you have money in the coffers for Justin. That's how some people, I know that's how I was thinking, but the bears yeah. are like, no, we're going to do it this way. And now with Caleb, we have money going forward. So we're going to have to figure out what we're going to need to do. Like you said, you know, 20, was it 2028, 20, 2029, we're going to kind of have to figure out how that Caleb money is going to work because keep in mind, who's our other free agent? I'm not, not free agent. Who's our other first round pick? Romo Dunze. Yeah, yeah. Gotta... so it means their contracts come up at the same time. And and who what what position is the second highest paid on most teams now if they're really good? Wide receiver, Wide defensive receiver. end. Yeah, it's up there. The Lions, I, I think it says they know what the hell they're doing. I think that we need to pay attention to the fact that they're going to be dug in for a while. And so we need to make sure that we take care of our business so that we're able to compete. At the at these guys, I hate to say it, fuck at this guy at these guys' levels. Yeah, I mean, at the Lions' levels. Like, excuse me, French, but that's it's come to that. I got a curse about that now. The line, the freaking Lions, man. The freaking Lions, man. So that's what it says. Lions. That's what the Jared Gol Golf contract says to me. Yeah, and I mean, <laughs> a lot of great points there. The one of the things to note there is Jared Goff is now going from a guy who 
was traded and given away. And like you said, watch the guy he was traded for elevate that team to a Super Bowl. But now Goff is at a different point of his career where he's been in a division with Aaron Rodgers and Kirk Cousins and Matt Stafford himself. Well, he wasn't here with Stafford, but he replaced Stafford. It's a division that's had a lot of highly touted quarterbacks over the last decade. And now Rodgers is gone. Stafford is gone. Kirk Cousins is gone. Jared Goff is now the highest paid quarterback in the division. He's also the most tenured because you have Jordan Love, who was a first round pick, J.J. McCarthy and Sam Darnold, who are first round picks, and Caleb Williams, who was the number one overall pick, all young, all still on their rookie contracts, except Darnold, but we're not counting him. And now Goff is <laughs> Goff is the guy who just went to the NFC Championship last year. Now he's the guy with all of the expectations on his shoulder. They're not the underdogs that nobody saw coming anymore. They're now the team that has the bullseye on right. them. Do you think that changes anything in, the, in that perspective? Because I think that Goff is a guy, when you put that bullseye on him, I don't know. I don't know how they're going to react. Mm. Changes the thing because of their, uh, because of their head coach. I was just mm. saying, because of their head coach is why I don't think it changes it. Uh, you know, he, they, they'll find a way to have a chip on their shoulder. They'll find a way to, to make it personal, but in a positive, but in a productive kind of way. Uh, they're, they're, they're draft players who have that type of mentality. They get free agents who have that type of mentality. They, they, like I said, they know who they are. So I don't think it has anything. I think, I don't think having a bullseye or being targeted because again, they're still not the team to beat in the NFC. That's still San Francisco. And to some degree that may be the Eagles because of their talent, possibly the Cowboys, but I would say the Lions are probably at least third, maybe second if you really push it, but not 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 a secure second. It's a debatable second. So mm -hmm. they still have something to prove, you know. And they still they still have the onus of the Lions, and people still say, "Ah, yeah, it's the Lions. They'll, they'll fall back. Something will happen." Yeah. So so yes, yeah, so I don't think that's going to change anything. That's the only fan base that I saw celebrating going to the NFC uh, championship game, though. The, the, that fan base has been walking around like they won a Super Bowl all offseason. It's been a bit weird. But something about Goff that you brought up there is, first, he's done it with the Lions. He went 3-13. and 13. He also started that way with the Rams as a rookie. He only won two or three games. But it's a great example yeah. of wins aren't a quarterback stat. Because look at this guy. When you put the talent around him, the Rams had written him off, even though he took him to the Super Bowl. And this is something that I think it's a tough point here, but it is something that I believe is true when it comes to Jared Goff's talent. I believe Jared Goff is limited to, and you have those conversations all the time. I don't want to get into that. The guys who are game managers and game breakers, because I believe the best quarterbacks have to be game managers to win games at times. I mean, even Tom Brady and Peyton Manning, you can be playmakers at times, but you can be game managers. What I like to term it is he's a guy you can either win with or win because of. And to me, Jared Goff is a guy you can win with. He's not a guy who, if you put Jared Goff on a bunch, of, a number of different teams in the NFL, he's not going to elevate those teams to the next level. Similar to what Matt Stafford did when you put Stafford on the same team that Jared Goff was on, he elevated them and took them to another level. Jared Goff, Goff, maybe he's capable of doing that, but at this point of his career, I think I've seen enough to say I don't believe he's that guy. I don't think he's a guy you win because of, but to counter that point and even play devil's advocate of myself a little bit to another point you made is they have the GM in place that might be able to put enough talent around him that, hey, I got I to gotta actually be scared of Jared Goff and the Lions for once, which I admittedly haven't been over the last couple of years. That's because Brad Holmes, if there was a GM out there that I would compare and say I think is doing as great of a job in the last couple of years as Ryan Poles has done, and I've actually taken note. I talked about it last year. I thought we were following a similar rebuild path that the Lions were, but we were a year behind. Now, if we would have closed out the year and beat the Packers mm -hmm. last year and kept Justin Fields, the two parallels would have looked pretty similar. Now, 
obviously the rebuild path True. started along the way, but the Lions chose to stick and build around Jared Goff. The Bears had a position the Lions never had. They never had the number one pick. And even when they had the number two pick, it was in a draft that was not quarterback heavy and went Tavon Walker and Aiden Hutchinson at the top. So they've never had this opportunity to get a Caleb Williams. And I think this could be a huge difference over those five years is us having this special quarterback because I believe Caleb Williams is a guy, at least so far, and what he translates to be in the NFL is a guy you can win because of. And we're putting him in a arguably a better position, at least with weapons, than what Jared Goff has in Detroit. Now, I won't argue the offensive line. that That is why the Lions and Jared Goff have had a ton of the success they've had. Lions have a top three, easily top five offensive line in the NFL. And that's our biggest issue with them right now is can we get past that line? And what is Jared Goff going to do down the stretch? There's a lot to this one, man. There's a lot to it. Do you have any more thoughts after everything I just added in there? Yeah, I, I do, actually. Um, it's funny you say Jared Goff is a, is a person that they can't win because of. And I'd venture to say, arguably, I, I don't necessarily agree 100% with that because he's part of the reason why they're keeping him is because they're winning because of him and what he does as a quarterback what he's been able to do, how he's been able to hold that team together and navigate. Everything doesn't always, from my perspective, everything doesn't always translate into physically what the player can do on the field. There are other aspects. There's ways of being a leader. There are ways of, of, of dealing with adversity. Uh, there are ways of being mentally tough. And I think Jared, and you, I forgot, you're right. He started off with the Rams very tough. Jeff Fisher was the head coach at the time. And he started off very rough. And it looked like he might be a bust. And then you get a new head coach, change things around, and then he's a prolific passing quarterback. And then they get to the Super Bowl and lose a close Super Bowl. Then he's not so good any longer, can't win with him, ship him off to, you know, Siberia and, and Detroit. <laughs> and then it looks like he's here just as a stopgap. And all of a sudden you start to win games because of what he's doing as a leader, what he's doing. One thing Jared's always been, he's not a big arm quarterback. He's not Mahomes. He's not Lamar Jackson with athleticism. He's not Josh Allen with an arm and athleticism. He's not a lot of some of these physically gifted quarterbacks, but he has always been an extremely accurate passing quarterback. And from my time as a little munchkin watching football at the age of five that I can recall up to <clears> – <throat> My current age is years old. <laughs> what I've noticed is, is is that if you're in the NFL, if if you're an accurate passing quarterback and you have an ability to navigate your area, you know, your pocket area, if you're not an athletic quarterback, navigate and, and you're able to pass, you know, and you're able to read the defenses and you can you can think or outthink or think at a at a level that's competitive on the field and you're an accurate passing quarterback, you can be extremely successful in the NFL. And as long as you have a good GM, it's a good structure, everyone understands who they are and everyone else is doing their job. You can be Mark Rippon and win a Super Bowl. You can be Eli Manning. You know, he had a nice arm. He's a man. I get that. You know, he won a Super Bowl. You look at that team, the way it was structured, Mark Rippon, that, that, that Washington team was good for several years with him. And then they finally, you know, won a couple of playoff games. Oh, and, you're talking about Mark won. Rippin. Now, Mark yep, Rippin was, was not a Hall of Fame I remember him. I remember him. I was thinking of Brett Rippin. When you yeah. said it, I was thinking of Brett Rippin. I was like, no, no we no. can't win any Super Bowl with Brett Rippin. But, yeah, you're right. Mark Rippin, <laughs> no, I remember no. him. Old no, Redskins no. quarterback that a lot of you guys will remember. For sure. sure. Yes. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah, you had me off there. Threw me off. Yeah. And, you know, I look at Jim Plunkett. <laughs> Ripping three off, my bad. But yeah, but Mark Ripping, I think it's his uncle or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, and then you, you talked about Jared Goff. You, you feel that he, he is who he is and he's not going to get much better. He's not dead. And there are always things you can do to make you a little bit better than you were the season before. And I look at a guy like Jim Plunkett. Now, Jim Plunkett was a first pick overall by the New England Patriots. Struggled, considered a bust, was floundering around, found his way on the Raiders team, was a backup. 
I can't remember who was starting ahead of him. It might have been Mark Wilson or something like that. Got hurt or whatever. Plunkett took over. They go to the Super Bowl, beat the Eagles in the Super Bowl, and then he stays on a the team. They get to another Super Bowl, and then they beat the Washington Redskins. I think in it. So he wins two Super Bowls. I think Plunkett, if he's not in the Hall of Fame, he's real close to being in the Hall of Fame. But it's mainly because of you know those latter years where he got better. He didn't get faster. He didn't get stronger. He got better. He got better at being a quarterback. And there's so much more to quarterbacking than just from what I've been able to gather than what you just do on the field. There's so many things before you even hit the field. There's a preparation. There's how you hear so many times. Kirk, Kirk Cousins, we saw that. And if you watch quarterback, uh, in the Netflix special last year, you saw how how uh, diligently Kirk Cousins is in his books, all this stuff. These, these are the things that we don't see. You know, he, he's not spending time at home playing with the kids as much. You know, he's even when he's hurt, he's still looking at his stuff, you know, continually getting better. You look at Brady, guy like him, it's just it's constant. You know, Manning, also known for just being, you know, you know, just obsessed with all the nuances of getting better, the timing, the foot, all these things, you know, how, how the measured steps for each route and what you do. It's things we hear about Caleb doing now, which makes me feel good. But Jared Goff is only 29. He can play for another seven years without much of a drop off and he can still be getting better up here. So I don't think we've seen the best of him just yet. And keep in mind that they lost, but they, that loss in the conference championship, it wasn't because he played poorly. It wasn't on him. Jared, Josh Reynolds, make a couple of catches, dude. You know, hey, head coach, kick the field goal. Hey, you know, don't drop the interception. Kick the, kick the ball off and let it bounce off your head back into the receiver's hands. Kick the oh, field goal again. You know? They had multiple so, opportunities. So it wasn't, it wasn't because of oh, – yes. <laughs> but that's when the Lions reverted back to being the Lions, that, what, that brief mm -hmm. shining moment. But, um, but again, it wasn't because of golf. So, so I, I, all that to say that I, I, he, he may not be – you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link. If he's their weakest link, then they're sitting pretty pretty right now. Yeah, I, I love the nuance you brought to that. And there are a lot of things that Jared Goff can do. I think he's a great locker room guy. I think he has a ton of intangibles. He obviously is talented. A lot of people will say, like, he's not talented. He was a number one overall pick. He was a guy who was awesome in college. He was he was down there in Cal. He was slinging it. I mean, you gotta you got to love what you – Jared Goff is a guy who is talented. I just do believe – I still believe he's limited. I've watched a lot of tape on Jared Goff, and it's not sure, the accuracy. Sure. It's not the arm power. It's not the athleticism. It's the decision-making that some a lot of times, and that can get better. You and you saw it. We definitely saw flashes of it last year in the 49ers game. But where and why I think I believe we're in a better position, especially at the quarterback position going forward, is I think Jared Goff is always a guy who, when – you put pressure on him. If you can get pressure in his face, you can force him to make mistakes, and he's a guy who's beatable. As long as – if we could somehow get past – and that's the biggest issue right now is they have an offensive line that is so great at stopping teams from putting pressure on Jared Goff. So I think right now that's the biggest key, and I think over the next five years that could be – the key to this rivalry and us becoming a bigger rivalry with the Detroit Lions. Everyone always talks Bears, Packers, and they'll always be the biggest rivalry. But we got a little rivalry coming up here with the Detroit Lions a bit, too. It's fun to watch. So I'm excited to see it. Yeah, same here. Uh, I, I, right quick, I, I think about Brady, the two Super Bowls he lost he got pressure up in his face. So anybody, even if you're Brady, you get pressured. You're not, especially if you're not an athletic quarterback, if you're not the Lamars or Josh Allen's, uh, the Mahomes, the guys that can, can do something outside of the pocket and get away from pressure and still complete accurately downfield, then yeah, you, you're going to be a problem if someone gets pressure on you. Manning, Brady, you know, golf, he's, he's, he's from that mold in terms of being, you know, a pocket passing quarterback. Uh, but like you just said, you got to get there. <laughs> and then if he's getting better at beating the blitz and he gets better talent around him, then you then you struggle. But if you don't have to blitz and can apply pressure, and I think that's where the Bears give the Lions problems. Because even last year, we should have won both games. 
I, I think that the, the, the benefit of the defensive scheme that we have, it doesn't rely on blitzing as much. And you get that pressure up front. And with the length we have with our defensive tackles and now our defensive ends, I think that can cause some problems. Also with the ball hawking secondary and with linebackers that can cover in space that don't have to move off the field. So whether it's first, second, or third down, those linebackers are still out there, still causing problems. It can still cover a lot of area. I think that's why we give the Lions problem. I think that's why in the heyday of Lovey Smith and the Bears, when Rodgers was here, the Bears would give Rodgers problems because they had that pressure up front. They had that linebacker that could control the middle of the field. It made it very difficult. And so that's where I hope the Bears, like you said, that rivalry comes in that, you know, I need, if Iberfus continues to win, continues to develop players, our defensive players continue to develop. They still, still do a good, a good job drafting the players to fit his system. Then, yeah, man, we we should do well. <laughs> hey, fingers crossed. I'm with you there, and I think it's going to be fun to watch it play out. We're both young teams. I think both have great GMs. It's Brad Holmes and Ryan Poles. Mm-hmm. But I think going forward, the edge I think we could have is that quarterback, and I think that's something to be excited about because – as Chicago Bears fans, we haven't been able to say that. And now it's just we want to see it on the field. As much hype as there's been, we've been hyped about a lot of quarterbacks we've drafted before. I do believe Caleb Williams is extremely different than all those guys. And to me, the biggest thing staying healthy. I'll knock on wood, but that's the thing. I won't talk about it much, but I will say it this one time. is Just got to stay healthy, and that's that's always the biggest worry with any, with any player that we draft that's – this talented it's a hey, guy's got to stay healthy and i think he's going to be a superstar and hey this this rivalry is going to be fun to watch and hopefully we're not getting beat down like we have the last few years even though we have no. had detroit's no. number now we got to do the th- same thing to yes. green bay yes <laughs> yes we do 100 <laughs> percent. well hey glenn morgan the host of the podcast over there. He's got Easy Smoke in the GM podcast, and he's a wonderful analyst for NBC Sports Chicago. Glenn, great friend. Always welcome to come on, man. Any final thoughts or anything you want to say to the people? Dude, man, I, I, I need to have you hire you as my hype man. I appreciate that. No, no, do I thank you for, for saying all that. <laughs> appreciate you. I always appreciate the platform that you provide to be able to talk, talk football and chop it up, man. I, I thank you. Uh, so much and thank everyone who, who pays attention to what's going on out there and hey man just bear down that's all i got to say at the end of, at the end of it all bear down bear claw er. <laughs> yeah i still struggle there, there we yeah, go there it is there yeah. it is we'll do it again <laughs> yeah. i appreciate you glenn